it's gone dark. I keep on turning my lights up and then down and then up and then down and then the lights are going on and then off and then on and then off and can please, can the clouds just stay where they are? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be my monthly makeup roundup for June. I have amazing products in front of me today to update you on and give you a more in-depth thoughts across the last month that I've been using these new products. I've got brushes, I've got a lot of makeup, as you might have expected. I've got skincare, I've got fragrance, I've even got a hair care item this month, which is a little rare for me. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, let's talk about this Florasis cleansing oil. This is a makeup removing oil cleanser. This is amazing. Okay, this was gifted to me along with a bunch of other Florasis products and I was very, very skeptical about this. I did not expect this to be good. I did not expect to like it, but as I'd run out of my pharmacy balm cleanser, which is my favorite, I know you guys know that, I thought let's give this one a go. And it's incredible. As far as getting makeup off my face, I think it's the best I've ever tried. It dissolves mascara so easily and it's very thin. I think that's the other reason. I don't know why I didn't have high expectations of this one. A few reasons, I guess. One, I didn't even know Florasis did skincare. I thought they were just purely makeup. I didn't know they had other products. So that was news to me. And I hadn't heard anything about this. And I don't know why, because it's amazing. Second of all, I think when I actually pumped it out into my hand, it feels so, it literally feels like water. It doesn't feel oily, it's not thick. It's a completely different consistency from any other makeup remover I've tried before. It literally feels like water in the hand. So then I'm thinking, oh, this is not gonna get any of my makeup off. I prepared for disaster. And then I massaged it into my skin and everything just literally fell, slid, glided straight off my face and it is very effective. I love the presentation, this little flower, but ultimately it's a, the proof is in the pudding, it's about what's inside and what's inside is amazing. I think this is really great makeup remover, very, very effective. And not overwhelming in the scent or anything like that either, which is a joy and a treat. Next up, let's talk about my fragrance of the month and it is the Silky Woods that I spoke about in my haul from Goldfield and Banks, which is an Australian niche fragrance brand. <gasps> Let me tell you about this fragrance. This, oh, it's so beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's that spicy, warm, sexy, woodsy, smoky scent that I absolutely live for. This is a little less loud than some of my other fragrances. It's very, very long lasting. Like I can still smell this on my wrist, on my clothes after like a shower and a couple of days. Like that's how long lasting it is, but it isn't extremely strong. So it is closer to the skin. The sillage isn't huge, pungent, room filling. So it actually is quite nice for these warmer months in spring and summer. Typically these fragrances are really loud and in hot weather, they only get louder and they can be a bit too heavy, a bit too much, especially for like other people who didn't sign up to smell like this. This one is definitely a bit more office friendly, a bit closer to the skin, a bit quieter, and I'm not mad at that. I think I needed that for the spring and summer, but it's just, it's unique, but it ticks all of my boxes at the same time, and it is absolutely beautiful. Very, very smooth, huge compliment grabber, and like I said, it will last for days, but only on your skin, like you won't be able to smell it around you days later. It's gonna be quieter and closer to the skin, but very, very beautiful. And the box makes a very handy little brush holder. So next up, let's talk about these Sydney Grace makeup brushes, which launched this month. And I got to try these in PR and they are so good. These are such good brushes. If you prefer synthetic hair brushes, these are the best synthetic hair makeup brushes I have ever tried. My favorites are the foundation brush that I can't stop using. I love this so much. The contour, little contour and eyeshadow brush is also very, very good. Perfect for nose contour if you like to do that. All of the eyeshadow brushes are amazing, but particularly the largest 
fluffy blending brush is so so good and I also love the like angled blush brush very very nice brushes they're all super soft oh I almost forgot to mention this like angled I guess it's a brow brush I as I said in my review they don't have the names of the brushes on them so I'm not sure the like numbers anymore but this is like the angled very detailed I guess brow brush and I've been using this for liner like it with shadow and it is so precise and so perfectly beautifully angled for doing like a winged liner with shadow that it has made my life very very easy so yeah these are amazing if you like synthetic hair brushes i think these will probably be the best you've ever tried very very soft very nice shapes perfect really really impressed by those so let's talk about the way scalp serum i was sent this in pr and this is like hit and miss for me there's things i like about it and things that i don't the first thing i like about it is the packaging i love this you push this little button on the top and then you have your serum in this pipette okay say it with me pipette it's fun to say okay and then you sort of drop this down your scalp and then you part your hair and again drop along your scalp and you do that all throughout your hairline that's what you're supposed to do and on the bottle it suggests that you do this daily and it is supposed to create the ideal environment for thicker fuller hair drop daily onto your scalp for best results so yes i like doing it that's the first thing it's a fun it's fun for me at least the thing to do i the smell of this is delightful it's glorious it smells incredible like an expensive perfume that i would wear i think it's beautiful scent wise the other thing is that i've noticed the scent literally stays all day it's like an extra perfume and it's beautiful and i can smell it and get wafts of it all day and i smell like a treat believe me I definitely haven't been using this long enough to tell you that it's given me thicker or fuller hair I've only had this for like a couple of weeks and it would definitely take a lot lot longer than that for me to see like changes to the condition of my hair so that remains to be seen the one drawback the thing that I don't like about this is I feel like this makes my hair greasy my roots greasy so I will only start to use this after like the third or fourth day after I've washed my hair because I just don't I don't want to make my hair greasy quicker who wants to do that you know but yeah I mean it is kind of easy to apply it just to the scalp avoiding the hair but then you are supposed to massage it into the scalp and just like once it's sat there for a while even if I don't massage it in it gets onto my hair especially if you're parting the hair and putting it throughout your whole scalp then it is getting onto the hair and I do find that it is making my hair oilier so that I was not a fan of okay so moving on to to the makeups first up let's talk about this Chantecai anti-aging face tint I keep saying skin tint it's face tint okay use its correct name you Wally I love this stuff I think you guys have got that memo by now it's I oh, just can't stop sniffing it. it smells like Turkish delight and I absolutely love it it's a beautiful product I have a tutorial that it'll either have been up or is coming up on Monday which is like my five minute makeup routine and this has become like my go-to for that on the go quick and easy five seconds five minutes five seconds is a bit a bit too fast but this has become my go-to when I don't want to put a lot of makeup or a full face of makeup on this has become like the product I reach for I absolutely love it just buffed into the skin a very light layer and it's going to give you a healthy bronzy glow it evens up my skin tone between my face and body everything matching up and it tones down redness and it just gives a fresh healthy glow to the skin that is gorgeous I really really like this a dream product for summer as I spoke about it in my summer favorites and yeah I'm really really enjoying it I'm impressed you only need a tiny amount the one drawback is the packaging it gets very very messy it's always dumping out in the lid but I mean that's a small price to pay now I picked up the Sisley bronzer from the airport on my was it on my way back no it was on my way to my holiday because a lot of you guys have been recommending this one to me and I'd never tried it this is the one in the gold there's also silver packaging and I think they're the same bronzer just different 
colour packaging. I, who knows why? But this is a very luminous, natural, very warm tone bronzer. I do like it. It's a little too light for me currently in my summer skin tone, but the formula is very, very nice and it's very, very subtle and natural on the skin. It's not shimmery or like glittery. It's just like luminous and I think it's very, very pretty. So thank you to all of you who recommended me that because I am really enjoying it. Next, let's talk about a product that literally reached into my chest and stole my heart this month. Okay, that's where it that's where it went. If you noticed it was missing. It's gone to the RMS Beauty blushes. These are what they called the Redimension Hydra Powder Blush. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. I have one of these on my cheeks today. I have the shade Maiden's Blush on today. I used one of these in like a trying new makeup and I said in that video, I'm instantly gonna have to go and get more of these because I fell in love. I mean, they're the most beautiful blushes to look at that I've ever seen. But I need more than that. I don't wanna just look at a pretty packaging, as fun as that might be but these are as good as they look. So I now have three colors. I have Sangria and Mai Tai is the original shade that I bought. And then the new one that I'm wearing today is Maiden's Blush. So let's show you some swatches. So we have Maiden's Blush, Mai Tai and Sangria. I mean, they're so beautiful. They're so glowy and luminous that you don't even need highlight if you're wearing these blushes. They are absolutely stunning. They really are like a highlight and blush in one. I think they're so flattering. They are as beautiful on the cheeks as they are to look at in the pan and I've been living for them. I couldn't promise you that I wasn't going to go back and get another shade as well. There's already one that I have my little eye on another one already. I think they're beautiful. I like the packaging and they've become like my favorite blush to wear at the moment because they're just so glowy and luminous and the shades are just right up my street and I love them. Next, let's talk about the NARS Summer Unrated Eyeshadow. So I also use this in my trying new makeup. These palettes are a pain to open. That's number one without breaking a nail. This is the eyeshadow palette that I used in my Get Ready With Me trying new makeup. And in that video, I wasn't in love. I had some issues with this sparkly shade down here. It has a lot of fallout. And yeah, the colors were just okay for me. To look at this, it's not really my color story. I really like the row of neutral mattes. I said that in my review and they're really handy. Everything else is a little underwhelming to me and the color story didn't really wow me. And the performance is a bit hit and miss. So I like the mattes in here are really, really nice. I used all of these mattes the other day just with this shimmer here on the lid. And I really like the look that I came up with. This is a nice smooth, nice amount of shine shadow but yeah some of the other shimmers in here are a little fallouty and tricky and yeah this one is very beautiful as well that's this shade here but these I found are a bit crumbly a bit of a fallout there and I just the color story just doesn't really come together for me it's just kind of missing something tying it together and I just wasn't wowed by it overall so it's not my favorite eyeshadow palette from NARS. It's not a hate, but it's definitely not one that I like. feel like I'm gonna be reaching for a lot. It's just kind of okay. And there are some kind of problematic shades in there as well. So it was a little overall disappointing. Next up, let's talk about the blushes and the highlights from Pat McGrath. So these were her blush duos and her highlights. I have reviewed and demoed her blush duos. So I think you guys probably know what I think of these. So I picked up three shades. I have Paradise Glow, I have Divine Rose 2, and I have Cosmic Coral. This was the one that I thought I would like the most, but I just was a little underwhelmed. I just kind of felt like it was okay. And the Paradise Glow, I was a little disappointed that it just seemed a bit similar to the other blushes. So I now know that, or several of you have confirmed to me that Pat McGrath replied to a comment, or Pat McGrath 
social media, replied to a comment saying that Paradise Glow is indeed Paradise Venus and Desert Orchid. That's the duo. So that irks me a little because I feel like the brand were very elusive in confirming whether there were any existing shades in this blush launch. I feel like they weren't answering the question 99.9% .9 of the time. One time apparently they did answer the question on a comment under a photo, but that's not really being transparent about it. I feel like the, the shade names should have been listed on her website. So when you clicked on this blush, it would say very clearly that this was Paradise Venus and Desert Orchid. So that if you already own those blushes, you don't waste your money. I think that's a little unfair that they, they weren't more transparent and open about that. All of the other shades are apparently new shades. But again, the brand has even, I feel like, been elusive about confirming that or not. So that's not very helpful. I will say the br blushes overall, I like them. I just am not wowed by them. I don't feel like they're something you need and must run out and they're incredibly special or different or unique I was a bit disappointed because I just really wanted them to be closer to the blushes that were in the Bridgerton palette because the formula of those is like my favorite blush formula ever I absolutely live for that formula and that's what I really want from the brand them to bring out those Bridgerton blushes in singles or in duos like this amazing we would have loved that these were just a little too close, too similar to her existing single permanent blushes of which I already own all of them. And I just felt like there was nothing among these I didn't already have in my collection or that wowed me. They just, they're nice blushes, but they aren't like incredible, amazing wow factor, which is what I typically expect from Pat. And I just kind of felt like the whole launch was a little disappointing because one, there was no transparency and knowing which shades were repeats. So, you know, a lot of people bought Paradise Glow thinking it was gonna be different and it was the same blush they already had. <laughs> Second of all, there were lots of issues on the UK website on launch. And then the blushes themselves just kind of felt a bit repetitive to what I already owned from the brand. My favorite, I will say, is Divine Rose 2. I have all the swatches, by the way, of these in my review. If you want all swatches and comparisons, I have a lot of those in my initial review. You. this was the one that I didn't try on my cheeks because I didn't think I would like it that much because it is much pinkier than my like go-to taste for blush but I actually really like this one and I think this one is a bit more glowy than the others so it kind of offered me a, a bit of what I was looking for whereas the others I just felt like they they all kind of looked a bit more matte than I was expecting now the highlights are a little bit of a different story. I'm wearing one of the highlighters today. The highlight I have on today is Venus Nectar and this highlight I love. It's just the perfect color for my skin tone, which is really important for me when it comes to highlight. To find a highlight that really flatters and goes with my skin tone is tricky. And when I find it, it makes a big difference to how I feel about the highlight. It's just the perfect amount of glow. I find it really beautiful and smooth and flattering and it melts into my skin because it's just the perfect color for me. I also picked up Golden Moonlight because I was kind of expecting Venus Nectar to be too dark for me, but it wasn't which meant that golden moonlight which is the light the sh next shade up the lighter shade actually is much too light for me so this is the divine rose 2 swatch and then we have venus nectar and golden high uh, golden moonlight <laughs> it is a golden highlight but it's called golden moonlight you can see there's a big color difference and because of that you can see venus nectar just looks a lot more natural than the golden shade on me it's melting into my skin and you're just seeing glow as opposed to seeing like a bright stripe on my skin tone obviously that is a heavy swatch but this one just does melt into my skin tone so much better than the gold moonlight shade i do like the gold moonlight there's still that same lovely beautiful formula that i find very very pretty and very very flattering on my skin tone but the shade of venus nectar is just much better for me and i have been loving it i think it's really really beautiful so there wasn't it wasn't all bad news okay I love the highlighters. Next up, we've got this cheek palette from Florasis. So I used this again in my Get Ready With Me, but I didn't use this blush because I had the, the RMS blushes that I wanted to try. This is my favorite product in this palette. It's absolutely stunning to look at. It's just absolutely, it's the sort of product you just don't wanna touch because it's so beautiful. And this blush 
is exactly what I expected it to be. It's just a very easy, everyday, peachy nude blush. Very beautiful. It's kind of like a satin. It's not super matte, but it's not luminous or glowy either, but very, very pretty. Overall, this palette is a little tricky for me to use because the contour shade is too light and too cool for my skin tone. But the highlight, again, is very beautiful, but much too light for me. Again, you see how much of a cast that's going to leave on my skin, but it's a gorgeous formula. Very, very high shine, but no like chunky glitter or sparkle in there. It is shimmery, but in a very wet, very finely milled way. So I think this is a beautiful palette, but for someone with a lighter skin tone than me, so you can really get the most out of it. And this is actually a powder in there, which I didn't, I thought these were two highlights. It's actually a setting powder, which of course I don't really use, but yeah, gorgeous, really nice formulas, but I think probably best suited to someone with a light, light medium skin tone. Next, let's talk about the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. I did do uh, use this in that same Get Ready With Me Trying New Makeup, and I have used it a good few times before and since that video to give you my full thoughts. I'm unfortunately not a big fan Fan of it for a few reasons. One, I picked up the wrong shade, which was my fault. However, there are no BD shades. There's only B shades in like my range. So I did get, I was forced against my will to pick up the wrong shade because my shades weren't available. The BD shades were not an option. So that's quite frustrating. I like how this feels. It's very, very light and fresh and watery as you might expect, very thin. And it gives a really nice, natural, healthy glow and look to the skin. All of that I really like. What I don't love about it is I feel like it enhances my texture. As I said in my video, once it's settled in, I feel like it's a bit aging on me somehow. The, the biggest issue I have with this is that after I initially made my video, demonstrating this. I was playing with my son. We were ha we were wrestling, okay? I'm just going to put my hands up. We were playing we were wrestling. I was wrestling my child. We we love it. It's our favorite thing to do. This was literally all over that child, okay? It was all it transfers worse than any other like complexion product I remember using. And I am a mother, okay? My face does not get left alone. There's faces and hands and elbows all over it all of the time. This was literally head to toe all over my son just from like playing with him. So that is the number one issue that I've got with it. It doesn't wear well and it transfers like a mother hubbard. It's going to be on your neighbour, your friend, your teacher, your mother, your child, your dog everywhere by the end of the day, but on your own face. So for me, that was a bit of a fail because I feel like this sort of product, it's kind of the, the point of it for me, at least. Why I would want this is like summer's day, spring, summer, hot weather, a bit of something, healthy glow to the skin, you know, even skin tone, much like the Shantakai. I feel like this is a similar like they're completely different formulas, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they suit or they are targeted towards the same purpose, the same type of person, the same type of makeup look, but this just doesn't deal very well with the condition. It's not going to wear very, very well. And if you're running errands and running about, it's gonna be everywhere. Everywhere there's just gonna be a trail of it behind you. So for me, it's it was a bit of a, an expensive fail. You also get a really small amount, 20 mils. So if you are going to use this as like a base product, I feel you'll go through this very, very quickly. And yeah, um, for me, yeah, a bit of a fail. So yeah, an expensive shame. But like I always say, better my money than yours. Next up, a product I have been obsessed with this month. I've been so wowed and it may quite well be my new holy grail. And that's the Huda Beauty Concealer, the Faux Filter Concealer. I had suspicions that this was going to be amazing. I feel like Huda Beauty, they have very few fails, okay? They have great quality products and I feel like they've had some real success with their uh, complexion products especially and they have incredible shade ranges and undertones. They put a lot of time and effort into that. So I did think this could be great. They also as a brand have moved more into like less Instagram full beat from you know 2010 style makeup recently. They're getting more natural. They're bringing out products that are more flattering for mature skin. So I kind of had a sneaky feeling this was going to be good but it is 
great. It's an amazing concealer. Very, very flattering for lines and texture under the eyes. I feel like, every, I like everything about it, to be honest, other than, apart from one thing. We'll get onto that. It's very smooth, possibly, probably the smoothest concealer I've ever seen or tried under the eyes. It has really great coverage, like it covers everything I want it to as far as darkness under my eyes, uh, yet it looks natural and without using a lot. The doe foot picks up like quite a small amount of product and therefore it's very easy to control not putting too much down, which I really like. The doe foot itself is very soft and gentle. The one nitpicky thing that I don't love about it is the size of the doe foot. I wish it was a little smaller. It's tricky to sort of carve out your eyes and do the lifting, you know, that thing. It's also tricky to kind of get down the bridge of the nose. So that I do, if I could check, if I could change anything about it, I would slightly make the doe foot a little bit smaller. But formula wise, I think it's amazing. It wears very well. It does not crease or settle in lines throughout the day. It's amazing. And I think it might even push my Pat McGrath off the top spot. People keep on asking me that, which you prefer, which you do prefer. My Pat McGrath concealer has been with me for years. I've only had this like weeks. So I'm still comparing, I'm still ironing out my thoughts on to which one is my absolute favorite, but it's definitely in with a shot. I'll tell you that for nothing. Next, let's talk about what I'm wearing on my eyes. It is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau palette. I love this palette. I think this is a really great palette. I love that ABH have kind of gone back to they're like what we know them for, this beautiful but understated colour story that is very, very wearable. Great formulas, great mattes and great shimmers. Lovely options in here. I think it's beautiful. I really like this packaging way more than I do like the felt that they previously did. I think it's much more sophisticated and classy and feels and looks nicer. I've now used every shade in here. I just used Wisteria for the first time today and I expected to have lots of issues and I didn't. What I will say is a bit powd more powdery than the other mattes in the palette and it took me to like get this amount of like impact from the color it took me a lot of building up but that was very easy to do it just needed like I had to like put some time in building it the color up to get the intensity that I wanted but I got it very easy it built very easily and it blended very beautifully which this type of color typically isn't the easiest to formulate nicely and I think they did a great job the fallout from this palette is basically none. I get very little fallout, if any. They're very easy to work with and I've really been enjoying it. This was a surprise hit of the year for me so far and I'm really excited to see where they go next because I think this will just be the start of ABH's comeback in 2022 and I'm here for it. Next up, let's talk about the Lancome Louis Hypnose Mascara. My thoughts on this have not changed since my initial review. I love the packaging, very, very chic and luxurious and that's about it. I have tried pumping and not pumping this mascara, and I don't like it pumped or unpumped. That's what I'm saying. It's just not giving me what I want it to give me. It's not dramatic enough. I'm not getting any length, barely any lift, and barely any volume. It's just not good enough in any of those categories to satisfy my mascara needs. I even feel like it looks okay. If you like a natural, more like issue wearing mascara look to the lashes, which I cannot fathom, but I know there are people out there who do. Uh, I still think there's better out there. I still think there are prettier mascaras that are more natural. I'd say actually the Lancome Hypnose, the original one, would tickle my pickle more than this one in that kind of area. So yeah, I feel like you can do better even if you prefer a more natural mascara. It's very expensive. The whole pump, having to pump it eight times is like a bit bizarre to me and absolutely really didn't make much difference as far as whether or how I felt about it. So yeah, this was definitely a disappointment for me. Next, let's talk about the Victoria Beckham Reflect Highlighter. So this is a cream stick highlighter that Victoria came out with this week, this month, when was it? Sometime in June. 
presumably. Now, I love a lot about this. It's completely like colorless and sheer. So basically any, anyone with any skin, in, get it together, woman. Anyone with any skin tone can use this is what she was trying to say. It's sheer, so it's not gonna leave a cast on anyone. It's not, it's not not sticky, but it's not sticky, you know? It's, it's got a slight tack to it, which I don't love. The actual glow itself is exactly what I live for with a highlight. When I, if I want to look like I'm not wearing highlighter, this is gonna do that for me. The packaging is glorious. Victoria Beckham packaging is always incredible, but, I do find this tricky to apply, like most cream products and stick products. It's not my favorite application process. I've found the best thing for me with this is either to use a brush or a sponge. Both work okay, but I still have to be a bit careful not to pick up what's underneath, like foundation and bronzer, whatever. I find it slightly tricky to apply it nicely without it impacting what I've already laid down before it. But the effect is gorgeous. I can't use this with my hands. If I tap it on with fingers, it ruins my makeup every time. So it is trickier to work with for me than like a powder highlight, which is my typical bugbear about cream products. Uh, that one isn't the trickiest, but it's not the easiest either. But the effect is gorgeous. It's not like, it's like you're not wearing highlight. It literally just looks like a slight glow. If you want subtle, the most subtle, just a hint of a glow, I think you'll really like it. I think also if you're very, very minimal with your makeup or who goes in with something like this and a bit of highlight and maybe some lippy and a mascara, then, and you like cream products, this will probably be all your dreams come true. For me, I just always find them tricky to work with. And that one was, it was, it was tricky and fiddly and yeah but I do like the effect it gives. Next, I've got a couple of lip products I tried this month. This is one of the Tarte Lip Plumps. I'm wearing it today. This is the shade Peachy Beige. I also picked up another shade that I forget, but it was a corally shade. I love these. I think they're so juicy and lovely looking on the lips. It does have quite an intense tingling sensation. This is more, it's more of the cooling as opposed to the burning. I definitely prefer a cooling tingle to a burning tingle is what I've discerned from this process. These, and it also it's still there now, and I probably put this on an hour ago, so it does last a long time, that tingle feeling. They're very juicy, plump looking. I really, really like the shades and the feel of them on the lips, and the finish is beautiful. Really, really like these. And lastly, but by no means leastly, this Fenty stain. So this is the Poutsicle lip stain. Again, I used this in my Get Ready With Me Trying New Makeup, and I have used it a few times since. I've also seen what lots of people are doing with these is applying it and then blotting it with a tissue to get the stain straight away. So for me, I don't want to do that because you start off with this gorgeous, glossy, juicy looking shiny lip which is what I wanted them for and then throughout the day what happens is as it wears off and and wears down and as you go about your day and you take drinks and eat and all of that and it settles down to a matte stain on me so I really like that I think it wears really nicely I do think I'm not a big fan of stains I just like my lipsticks to come off and then I can reapply I will say that reapplying goes nicely on top like once you're ready to reapply that doesn't cause a problem it's very easy to reapply and freshen up and it looks really nice on top layered if you need to do that I like how it looks once it's settled down to a stain it, it fades nice and evenly it doesn't end up you know the rim around your lips or anything like that what I will say is I think I prefer this type of product that they're all bright the shades that they came out with initially I feel like if it's going to be a stain for me I'd rather like nudes because that's when I want to like go out you know if I'm going about my day and I've got a nude lip so, so it's not disappearing off my lips it's still going to leave the stain there throughout the day I don't know that I love leaving a sort of slightly orange stain on my lips I'd rather reapply it so I just don't think these are for me but I will say they do last and wear very very well and they definitely do leave a stain that is even and fades nicely if you like these and you want them sort of more matte stain that is what I've seen people doing applying it and then taking a tissue and just 
and you get the stain straight away, which looks beautiful. So yeah, definitely quite a versatile product and I think a very nice innovative product. And I love this color. And you can see now I've just rubbed rubbed my hand and it is <laughs> quite hard to get off. There's still a little bit showing there and I really gave that a good scrub. So yeah, they definitely do stain. They definitely do last a really long time. But for me, if I was gonna have a stain, I'd rather it was, they had more nudes and neutral shades to try. But yeah, the actual initial gloss, I love. So there you have it. That is everything that I tried in the month of June and my thoughts on it throughout the month. Please let me know if you tried any of these products, how you got on with them, if you liked them more or less than I did. That's always really helpful to see other people's experiences in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.